All right. Good morning. Happy Monday. We're back. <clears throat> morning, everyone. Yeah, earnings season coming. Margin. Earnings season. We're finally going to be watching that earnings calendar again. I haven't opened that thing up in a long time. Morning, guys. Welcome back. How we doing? Bonjour. Tesla news. Yeah, Tesla layoffs. A little bit of downside this morning. A lot of stocks gapping up, which is slightly concerning. <clears throat> A little bit concerning on the gap ups. The gap and goes have not been... We'll talk about it. Gap and goes have not been uh, too kind. So we'll see. We'll see. Morning, guys. Welcome back. Yeah, big boy earnings on Thursday, right? Let's see. Netflix. Yeah, Netflix Thursday. TSM Thursday as well. Yeah, we'll pop it open. Morning, everyone. Barcode, yeah. Brandon, it is. It is. We're still, still in the same channel. All right. Yeah, the Rangers beat the Islanders. That's all that really matters. <laughs> Man, the Rangers have uh, been a little shaky the last few games. You know who's been strong? The Jets. The Winnipeg Jets have been very strong. Let's see. How many games left? One game, right? Yeah, we just got the Senators left. Huh. If the Rangers win against the worst team potentially in the league, they will win their conference. So we shall see. Morning, guys. Yeah, good morning from Winnipeg. Harry, your team's looking good over there. Goalie's a beast. Yeah, they beat the Avs 7-0. It's crazy. All right. Well, let's get started. Hope you guys are having a good morning. Hope you had a good weekend. Hope you had some relaxation, a little bit of time away from the markets. Um, what a crazy week for me last week. Uh, NVIDIA trade, you guys obviously saw all that. Um, gave back a, a good portion of those profits, went for it, took my shot, uh, obviously did not work out for me, but ended up on a nice trade. So if I wasn't up where I was, I still would have been very happy with the profits I made on NVIDIA. So really gone for me, you know, it doesn't really quite bother me. I know a lot of people, a lot of Nostradamuses out there knew what I should have done, um, but I'm happy with how it ended up. So nice trade to end the week last week on NVIDIA. And uh, still watching this for some opportunity, actually. Still interested to see if this NVIDIA pullback has opportunity. Um, the problem is the overall market is still in a situation that I'm not that like confident on where that next NASDAQ ES move is. A lot of interesting stuff coming into today. Um, we, you know, I think probably about 80% of traders thought that we'd wake up with a ugly, ugly market today, including myself, I was like, oh man, you know, Monday might might look pretty ugly here uh, after seeing some of that weekend, uh, sort of how everything was going down on the weekend with Israel and Iran. Uh, and so I was expecting to see a little bit of drama this morning, but uh, <laughs> quite opposite, right? Sort of a slow grind back to the upside after hitting some channel lows. So still a lot of sort of question marks out there, right? And the longer the market, I think, trades within these question marks is, uh, is you know, the longer we have to be a little bit patient, a little bit careful here because NASDAQ is still in the exact channel. ES has been sort of slowly grinding lower a little bit because of that bank weakness. Uh, you still got the TNX going up. You still got gold holding up. Uh, you still got the dollar holding up. Um, so, yeah, still things to develop here, and uh, I think continue to proceed with caution. 
uh, maybe it's the earnings season that needs to give us a little catalyst as we approach that. Maybe it's the earnings season that will need to give us a little jolt in a single direction to get outside of this channel. But let's go ahead and review the levels. We'll review the, the earnings that are coming out. We'll get an idea of what levels we need to be careful of shorting into, what levels we need to be careful of going long into, um, and how to try to navigate some of the choppy seas that we've seen. And we continue to stay in, right? We're still stuck in the choppy sea. We're still stuck in, I think, like the Bermuda Triangle. Um, it's an area of unknown. So let's continue to stay cautious here. Um, today, a little bit of a gap up on almost every tech stock which is concerning to me. I do not like longing after gap ups. Gap ups, gap and goes in a traditionally not that strong market. I don't want to call it a weak market, uh, but a, you know, a market that isn't continuing higher aggressively. Gaps are dangerous, and you have seen gap ups on a lot of stocks this morning. So if you long a gap, sometimes you need that gap fill before the real entry shows up. And that's something I'm being careful of today. Before I long anything today or anything, and if I if I like something to the upside, I want to be careful of how much it has gapped up in the pre-market already, right? This is something to pay attention to this morning. Almost every tech stock has gapped up, um, and we might need gap fills before the long entry show up. So that's sort of the general overview of what's in my head right now, but let's go ahead and dive into the charts. Um, the first thing I want to pull up is the economic calendar. So let's start there. Uh, you guys can see right here, today is uh, Monday, April 15th. This morning, we do have retail sales. So retail sales in the pre-market, you guys can see right here. So let's keep, let's keep an eye on that, right? We have retail sales 830, manufacturing index 830. Let's see how the market responds to this news early morning today. All right, so that's number one. Tomorrow, nothing much. Uh, you do have Jerome Powell speaking, uh, probably at this IMF meeting. Um, so we have to be always a little bit careful when he opens his mouth. So tomorrow, 1.15 at the IMF, I think uh, it looks like Jerome Powell will be talking. Uh, so let's be careful of that. These IMF meetings are going on all day, right? You can see here all day, Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, IMF meetings, a lot of Fed presidents, FOMC members. You can see all these members here, members here. And so something to be careful of, right, as we approach the trading day. Um, but Powell speaking at 1 o'clock, 1.15, something to watch there tomorrow. Wednesday, nothing much, just some members, some FOMC members speaking um, at the IMF. Thursday, unemployment claims, that's our normal unemployment claims on Thursday. A lot of Fed presidents speaking, Fed members speaking. One, two, three, four. I mean, these are the same people, Bauman, Williams, Bostic. So a lot of talking heads this morning, it looks like, or this week. And then more meetings to end the week. So looks like that meeting is about, uh, is it today too? Yeah, it's, it's all week. All right, so it's all week. It is all week, IMF, all week. You guys can see right here. Here, 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 and then finally here. So an entire week of FOMC members speaking. We'll see how that affects on the market, right? We just have to sort of stay cautious intraday. But the big events, really? Just retail sales, Powell on uh, Tuesday afternoon, and unemployment claims are really the big ones, right? Everything else is sort of less important, less uh, crucial, and so that's that. Let's just watch this retail sales this morning for the short term. Let's keep an eye on that, see how that reacts this morning. Besides that, a lot of Fed presidents. <laughs> That looks to be the uh, the outstanding uh, trend this week is that FOMC members talking a lot this week. All right, so that's that. Uh, let's go into the earnings calendar because we do have some interesting earnings this week, which could also move this market. So today, more banks, Goldman Sachs, Charles Schwab this morning, some more banks. Uh, tomorrow, more banks as well, Bank of America. Uh, we also have some, you know, have, also have Morgan Stanley, BNY, PNC. So obviously, banks. That's how earnings season always starts. We always start with the banks, and we saw some weakness on J.P. Morgan last week. So something to be aware of there. Um, Johnson and Johnson, UNH, right there. 
United Airlines, Interactive Brokers, ASML, Semiconductor, right there to be careful of, as well as TSM on Thursday. Something to be watching there as well. Netflix, obviously a big one for tech, right? Netflix is always the this beginning of the tech earnings. They always start it out. Netflix is always the first one to go. So we'll keep an eye on that Netflix on Thursday. And then we close the week with American Express, Procter & Gamble. And that's about it. So not like the most important uh, earnings this week, but this is definitely always the week that it kicks off on. You always have these similar names to start the earnings season. So banks, Netflix, that's really the big ones this week. Uh, ASML, TSM for some semiconductors. And that's about it. All right. So with that out of the way, let's jump into the NASDAQ futures and let's take a look at, uh, well, first of all, let me go ahead and go to this and clean this up for you and just show you again sort of the larger picture view here with not a bunch of short-term lines on my charts. I'm just going to show you the major lines, the major zone that we need to continue to watch. And so we can see, right, with all the volatility that we've seen over the last few weeks, right, what is still this, the, the, the common trend? The common trend and what we are still trading in is this right here, guys, right? It's still the exact same larger channel on the NASDAQ futures. It is still between the 18,625 and around the 18,000 demand, right? So we are still within this exact same channel. We had a lot of volatility over the last few weeks. Down, back, straight up, straight down, straight up, straight down. What do we get today? Today, we are getting some upside in the pre-market. And really, that upside, in my eyes, is just coming on, is just happening because we are down towards the channel low, right? When we're down towards the channel low, what, do we, what have we seemed to get? We seem to get that upside. When we get up towards these channel highs, we seem to get the downside. And so that trend has continued to happen. Right, and so we need to be careful of that as we approach the market before we look for aggressive downside today. We need to understand, hey, we're coming off that channel low again. And what have I seen here in the past off channel lows? I've seen the markets sort of stay volatile, move back higher, and then find rejection points. And so where are the rejection points that I would be careful of today? The first area that's very clear uh, and where I definitely don't want to be aggressively long into is right here. This zone right above is very concerning to me. 18,370 to 18,400, we have seen many, many, many rejections at this exact zone over the last week, right? So my, one of my ideas today is, okay, let, let's let this NASDAQ sort of just fade higher, and then let's see what starts to happen in this zone here, right? Let's see what starts to happen at this 20 SMA and these previous rejection spots. Is this our next short opportunity up here, right? Do we let the markets fade into these rejections over here? And then do we see if there's a short play off this level? That's number one. That's possibly right now one of the most interesting setups because this little or this little move higher this morning, not something I trust that strong. Uh, I would trust this rejection spot more than I would trust this grind higher right now. Uh, so... The first thing I'm watching is, okay, if this thing just wants to grind and this thing just wants to pop it open, if we start popping into this 18.4 and 18.370 zone, if we start getting close to this daily 20 SMA, do we start to see the rejection play set up? All right, so that's number one. That's something I will be watching today. I'm going to be keeping my eyes on this 18.370 to 18.400 zone and that daily 20 SMA. If we get above that 18.380, 18370, 184, the next level is very clearly up at 18500. All right, we can see the 18500 rejections and the very clear 18500 rejections from Thursday into Friday of last week. So, 18500, very much a rejection point from last week, very much a previous rejection point, and if we do climb into that level, that is again a level to be cautious of on rejections. So, we're watching two zones above the 20 SMA, 18.370, 18.4, and then the 18.5 right up here. Levels to be careful of as we trade higher within this channel. To the downside, if we get a pullback to start the day, right? Let's say we get a pullback to start the day and we start coming back into some demands. Well, the first one I'm going to be watching is some of these lows from last week, right? So we saw some of these general lows right here. 
around this 18,230, 18,200. Right here, we had these these highs here. This is where we're, we're holding above in the pre-market today. And this is some hold level from back here a few weeks back, right? So we can see this 18,230 level was a previous level that we are holding above again. So if we get pullbacks today into that level and we start to hold, let's say, above that 50 SMA, this could sort of be that long intraday that's possible that you could look for. Maybe a long off this low here around this 18,230 for a move back into that supply up at 18,370. That is potentially the dance that we could see between the 50 and 20 SMA. All right, so you have the 20 SMA here, you have the 50 SMA here, and we could just get a bunch of this between the 50 and 20, right? What? When did that happen previously? Right here, right? See this right here? This is uh, Friday, Monday, and Tuesday of last week. We had this dance, obviously before CPI. We had the dance between the 20 and 50 SMA. That is possibly, or that is the exact zone that we are right back in, right? We are right back in this zone from last week, you guys can see we're trading in it again. So what happened while we were in that zone last week? We had pops off the 50 into the 20. We had 20 rejections into the 50. We had demand holds back into the 20, right? And we just continued to get that. So the most likely scenario, if you look back at time here, is that we just channel and chop between this zone here. So that is why I am interested in the morning pop into these highs right? And then seeing if that rejects. That's why I'm interested in that play. That's also why if we drop this morning and we pull back, I'm looking to see if that demand steps up again around that 18 to 30 area. So those are the two zones. Below that, you definitely have that clear 18100 demand that held on Friday, held on Thursday, held on Wednesday, and held last week on Friday or two weeks ago on Friday. So a lot of short-term channels, man. A lot of very precise areas to be watching, right? And uh, you really just have to think about risk-reward. That's how, That's the. I think that's the best way to approach this market is, okay, what level am I at and where's my risk-reward? So if we're up here, I think the risk-reward is to the downside, right? If we're up here and we're starting to see rejections, I think your risk-reward risk reward is to the downside. If we're down here, right, back at these lows, or back at these lows, then I think the risk reward is back to the upside. Um, so that's really what I'm going to continue to think about here. You can see the market is definitely holding that 50 this morning. We can go down to the 15 minute chart. So down to the 15 minute chart here on the NASDAQ, we can see 50 SMA is holding on. That 18,230 demand definitely hold on. I might move this down to 18,200. I think this is actually possibly the better level to have. You can see 18,200, 18,200. I think I might keep this at 18.2. So I'm going to say it's between 18.2 and 18.4. It's about a 200-point range. That's how I'm going to look at it for myself. You have the 50 SMA holding on. I would not short into that 50 today. Okay, so if you see the NASDAQ above this yellow line, I'd be careful looking for shorts into that. Could be a strong hold level today. If we get a pullback to 18.2, that is where I would consider whether there is a long opportunity off 18.2. So 18.2, 50 SMA, 18.260, and then to the upside, the 18.370, 18.4. I think the, if I had to put betting odds on the cleanest trade today, which I don't like, you know, I'm just doing this for fun, but if I had to put some betting odds on the cleanest action today, the cleanest trade today, it is likely a grind higher into this 20 SMA and then maybe some rejection plays here. Uh, that is probably the top watch that I have for now is I'm going to see, hey, let's trade this market back up, right? Let's get a weak sort of push back to the upside, back into some of these major rejection points. And then let's see if this is a ends up being a fade play, maybe back down into that 18.2 to just sort of stay in this general range on the NASDAQ. So let's keep an eye on that, right? Let's keep an eye on that 18.370, 18.4. I think that's a hot spot to be looking for today. Uh, either that or a pullback to that 18.2 or a pullback to the 18.1. But right now, I will be honest, I do not like trading. <laughs> you are right in the center of this chop fest from last week. You can see we're right there again. Not a great place to start setting up. Um, 
Not a great place to start setting up aggressive, aggressive trades, in my opinion, as you sit within this area, right? All right, let's go to the QQQ. This is pretty much the same read here. Um, the QQQ up into 443. I believe that is your uh, your likely spot to be looking for the sort of fade into this into today, right? So if we go down to this one-hour chart, you can see 443, 443, 443, 443. I think that is possibly where that QQQ tries to fade up into today. So let's keep an eye on that QQQ 443. I think that's a major level there. Um, you can definitely see the previous reactions here in the past. After we broke under that 443 on Friday, all right, I'm going to go down to the short-term time frames. You can see 443 tried to hold on. After we broke under that 443, it was pretty much just continuation of weakness on Friday. So I'm going to look for the Qs to fade higher back into that 443, which is what? That is CPI highs, right? So right here, I'm going to be watching for that QQQ to fade up into that 443 and then see what happens at that level. You have the 20 SMA at 441.60, uh, something to just be a little bit careful of. You can see on in the past, look at how the QQQ reacted at that 20. Once it popped above it, very strong upside. You can see we got back below it on uh, on Friday, strong downside. And so we are sort of fading right up into that level again today. So I think you can watch that 20 SMA. That's definitely important to be paying attention to. Uh, but I like this 443 level a little bit more. All right, I like this 443 zone as a heavy zone to be getting above today. So let's watch that. Now, of course, if the Qs get above 443, you know, that's sort of interesting for upside. So this is a level to watch on either side, right? 443, big level to watch. Now, the levels that have held this morning are very key, even levels that held last week, right? You can see right here, this 437, 437, getting bought up there. And you can see Friday's close, 437, is the exact level we held on, right? Even in the after hours when we were moving lower, we gapped up off the 437 demand. So that level's strong. Now, above that, you have these highs right here, 439, 439, 439, 439. And you can see in the pre-market today, 439. So I have two levels below to be watching for, for longs, right? If you get pullbacks, 437, 439. I would look for that pullback long, look for that pullback long. Those are two levels I'd be watching to see if long set up. I would not want a long today on a gap up, right? That's what I was talking to, talking about. QQQ has gapped up, right? This is a gap up. This will show as a gap up on the charts. I would not want a long on a gap up right into supply. I would want a long on a pullback, a gap fill, right? And see if that results in a long opportunity. At least you have a better risk reward at that at that point. So 439, 437. Uh, I like those two levels to be watching today for pullbacks. If you don't get pullbacks today and you just sort of grind higher, you got to be careful of that 443 rejection, uh, in my opinion, on the Qs. All right? ES, S&P 500 futures. So a little bit of a larger term look first because I want to make sure you guys are aware of what's sort of going on here on the ES. The ES has absolutely broken the larger term channel, like the four-hour channel. We have absolutely broken that four-hour channel, right? So let's go ahead and just review that real quick. This was the four-hour channel that we were trading within for a pretty long extended period of time, right? And we have definitely broken that. So that's the first thing to be paying attention to, right? The ES has, hey, the ES is no longer in this extreme, just straight up trend. Um, we have broken it. So first thing to just sort of monitor, right? First thing to be aware of when you, you know, remember where the ES is in the larger term picture. Now, I think the ES, I mean, I would like the ES to come back to here, this 5120, right? You see how we had this previous double top high that held very nicely here, this 5120 zone. That looks like a proper pullback level for the S&P 500 futures before finding that maybe upside move. We haven't quite gotten there yet. So we're still sort of suspended above this 5120, which I would like to see the ES come back down to, but definitely has not happened yet. So something to be aware of there, okay? 5120, uh, definitely an important level down below, but we have not retraced down to that level yet. Now, 
in the short term, right, we can definitely see where the rejections come in. This is the hourly chart, and there is no doubt, there is no uh, lack of uh, clarity here that the ES is clearly rejecting, right, every time it gets close to that 5270. So we have this 5270 level right here, one, two, three, four, eventually rejection got back up into it here and rejected again, all right? So 5270, if you get anywhere near that level, guys, in the future here, be very careful, right? If you start seeing the ES here at 5270, this is a monster level that you should have on your charts. That is very, very clear. So make sure you have that 5270 level marked out on ES. That looks very heavy up there. You also have that daily 20 up there as well. Um, if we zoom this down a little bit more short term, we'll go down to the 15-minute chart um, and look at sort of what's been going on here in the short term. Well, for now, I think this area here, this 5180, 5180, 5170, that's a very important hold for now. So you can see right here, Wednesday's lows, Thursday's lows. We did get under it Friday, but we have reclaimed it here in the futures in the after hours pre-market session, right? So this 5180 level is that pullback level that I would be watching today, right? If we could pull back, back to that 5180, 5170 zone and long off of this, that is really where I'd like to see that opportunity show up. Right here around that 5175, 5170 area is really where I'd like to see the ES pull back to today, right? Right here, right here. We reclaimed it here, and then if we can get that pullback, that would be the long I'd look for. All right? I don't want a long on a gap up, like I said earlier. I don't like the long idea after a gap up on the ES. But if we can have a quick reaction to the downside, and we see those buyers defend this level again, that might be the long that you're looking for today. So watch this move down into Wednesday, Thursday's lows. Right? Make sure you have Wednesday, Thursday's lows on your charts today at that 5175, which would also correlate very closely to that 50 SMA. To the upside, it's very clear. Look at how clear that is, that 5215. You can see right here, 5215, 5215, 5215, 5215. If we just go down into Friday's action, look at how beautiful the five minute break and retest was at 5215 on Friday. That was a thing of beauty on Friday, right? Previous pre-market lows, break, retest, rejection. Gorgeous right there at 52.15. So what are we watching today before we start going long, right? We need to be careful of longing into this level right here. That rejection spot from Friday and then some very clear previous rejections over the last few weeks. If we move higher into this, we have to be careful of this, okay? So for me, here's a very defined channel on the ES today. 52.15 highs and this 51.75 low. And you are just right in the center of that action to start this morning right now. So what would I want to look for? I'd look for this, right? Or I'd look for this, right? Those are the two plays I'd look for today. Either a pop into that supply and see if those rejections happen, drop quickly into that demand, see if those buyers step up. And of course, we're always on the look for the actual continuation moves, but we'll have to see if we actually get that. All right. So pretty clear levels on the ES, 52.15, 51.75. That's really your zone today. And I would want to look to set up trades at those levels, right? At the levels, not before them, but at them. All right. Uh, we got, what do we got? One minute until retail sales. Uh, so let's go, we'll, we'll wait. Actually, you know what? Let's review the SPY after retail sales. That's what we'll do. So if you guys could, we got 2,400 people here. We got 600 likes. Got uh, 40 seconds till, uh, till retail sales. So we will wait until 30 seconds for that number to come out. See what the reaction is here. If you guys could, press that like button for me. I'd appreciate that. We gotta get those, we're almost to 50, almost to 78,000. What are we at? Almost 78,000 subscribers, Raul. <laughs> I'm sorry, 80,000. What am I saying?
almost to 80,000 subs. We need 200 more. Okay. Retail sales number is out. Little bit of a pop to the downside. Number. If you guys got the number, feel free to uh, pop it in. Core retail sales, 0 0.011 actual. Okay, so slightly higher than forecast. Okay, so retail sales higher than forecast. You guys can see right here. 1% versus 0.5. Month over month, 0.7 versus 0.4. Lower than prior. So we have a lower than prior, but higher than estimation on the retail sales. And looks like markets are slightly pulling back off this level. ES. Yeah, a little bit of downside there. Where's the NASDAQ at? NASDAQ popping not really much of anywhere, guys. I mean, just right back within the chop fest of this pre-market. So really nothing here. I mean, a little bit of downside for now, but still just right in the center of this shit show here. What is this? Yeah, I mean, you can call it 18,230. You can call it 18,250. I mean, I'm going to keep it at 18,2 for me personally. Let's go to the 10-year. The 10-year 10 10 still going higher. So 10-year still moving higher. Okay. Dollar. Dollar still moving higher strong. Yep. Big big push on dollar, big push on TNX. Um, not much on gold this morning. All right. So nothing really. A little pop to the downside, but pretty meaningless for now, guys. Really just uh, in the same exact area we've been trading all morning. So really nothing on that retail sales yet. All right, let's go back to SPY. Let's review the SPY here, and uh, then we'll get into some stocks. So... The level that I would want to see the market move down into today to get a long opportunity for me is right here. It's right at this 511.50. This is where I'd like to see. Okay, so actually markets are reversing with some strength now. Um, I would like to see the SPY come back into this 511.50. This would be sort of that pullback long that I would have my eyes on today. Pull back to that Wednesday and Thursday low. Pull back to this hold level. You guys can see. Look how clean this is this morning. So... See this right here? Let's go to the five-minute chart and really get detailed here. We have a Thursday low, right, at 511.50. We have a Wednesday low, the exact same level. Now, look at the level that is holding after the gap up this morning, which is interesting, right? You have this gap up this morning, and look at the level that's holding. It's that Wednesday, Thursday low right here, right, right at that 511.50. So, if we get a pullback there, right, that's going to be the level that I'm going to be saying, hey, you know, we're back to that Wednesday, Thursday low. We're back to that sort of uh, pre that pre-market low from the futures gap up. And this could now be a spot I could look to maybe catch some upside off of, right? So that's the first level. Under that, you know, it's that 508. It's that low from, from Friday. That's the next level I'd look for. But right now, I think a pullback here would be very nice today if we could get it, right, back to that 511.50. Now, of course, I don't know if we're going to get it. But that would be the level I'm watching. Um, the next level I'm watching, let me go ahead and zoom out here, is this sort of CPI low. It's like right in this, I want to call it 515, but we haven't quite seen reactions there. So I did move it to 516. I'm trying to decide, you know, which, I think we just watch both. I think we can watch both. Let me just go ahead and pop this on my charts for us. I'm just going to name it. So I'm going to say, FOMC low, all right, because that is going to be an important level to watch. So I want to keep that on my charts, FOMC low. But I also want to watch this 516, and I'll show you why. So 515 FOMC low. Um, you guys can see it right there. That's going to be my next level. And then I do want to watch this 516 as well, and here's why. So here's your next two levels to watch above. Right here, 515 FOMC lows, and then above that, 516. Why 516? Well, right here. 516, 516, 516. And then 516 was the level that rejected here Friday 
that really caused the downside, right? Right here, 516 rejections on Friday caused that downside action. So I'm going to be watching those two levels as we push higher here, 515 and 516. I'll be keeping an eye on those two levels as the SPY moves higher. Being careful of that FOMC low, being careful of that 516 right here, this rejection from Wednesday, Thursday, and on Friday. Now, if we get above that 516, you guys know where we're going, right? If we go over, if we go over that 516, we are going to that that level that we've talked about for a long time now, and that is the 518. Okay, we've been talking about that 518 for a long time. So if we get above that 515, above that 516, and we're holding, right? That's your 518 push. ES. Coming into that 52.15 here, all right, this is going to be big. ES coming into this 52.15. This is a big level to watch here early morning. And we are now on a pretty major gap up on the market, in the pre-market. And we're coming right into, wow, we're moving pretty quickly here. Uh, we are coming aggressively into that 18.370, into that 18.420 SMA. We are pushing in the pre-market into major levels of rejections. And we have seen this in the past, and we need to be aware and cautious uh, of these types of moves because we have seen these pre-market moves just get totally dismantled in the intraday action. Um, and I, need you, I think we all need to be very cautious of chasing this because this is now a pretty major gap up. Um, and just be aware of that 18.370, 18.4 today. That's really the main level I'm watching. And on the QQQ, it's very clearly 443. That is the most clear level, I think, right now on the QQQ. It's this 443. If we can get above this and we can hold above this, then I believe you will get more upside, right? Um, this is why I was so interested in longs Thursday into Friday last week, guys. This is a major reason as to why I held my NVIDIA swings is because I saw the QQQ maintain that 443 into Thursday's close, right? And so that was pretty bullish in my eyes, but obviously you can see we gave that entire move back. And so we can't think otherwise, unfortunately. You know, I wish, you know, our minds as, you know, just human beings would want to see, uh, you know, we want to look for a confirmation that gets us outside of this move and starts to do have something different, right? Something different happen here. But the uh, the tendency of the market is to remain to you know remain doing what it's already been doing, and so if we just pop into this 443 again today, this could just be another fake pop back into this supply rejection, and we move right back down into those demand lows. Right? We we can't we can't discount the ability of the market to do that again. So be careful of 443, guys. Be careful of chasing longs into today into this level especially into that NASDAQ 20 SMA and 18.4 above. Be cautious of this zone. You can see the sellers that have stacked up at this level previously. All right? All right. Let's continue. Tesla. So Tesla, a little bit of data, a little bit of news this morning about layoffs. Um, and it's sort of sliding lower. Uh, but you definitely have some demand below to be careful of. So right here. You have this 167 level, 167 level, and you're sort of right down into that 167 level today. So I would be careful of 167 if you're looking to short Tesla today. That is definitely a level that is held in the past, and you are trading back into it this morning, 167. All right? So watch 167 on Tesla. If you break under 167, I think that could open a little bit of floodgates right back into the 160. But keep an eye on that 167 very closely. If I had to be honest, guys, I'm going to say this again, and I'm going to continue to say this on Tesla. Don't trade it, <laughs> okay? That's my honest That's my honest opinion for you. If you were a buddy of mine and, and, my, and someone was, you know, um, and, I, and he's like, hey, I'm looking to trade Tesla, my honest opinion to my friend would be don't even think about it because this is just a shit show of an area on Tesla. It's some days it's up, some days it's down, some days it's back up, it's back up again, then it's back down. And this is going to continue to do this sort of nonsense within this area. I just don't like trading when stocks are looking like this, when they're just sort of chilling inside of a zone. It can become pretty difficult. Now, I will say, if you like trading in these channels and you like trying to 
you know, take advantage of this back and forth. I would say today is a little bit more interesting for upside than it is for downside, right? If we look at historically what Tesla has done here over the last few weeks, right, as it comes down into this 167 zone, it usually gives you something of an upside move, right? So I'd be a little bit more interested in the longs here off 167. Um, yeah, covered calls, it's a different story there, hamster. Um, I'd be a little bit more interested in the 167 longs than anything else. However, do I plan on trading 167 longs on Tesla today? No, I do not. All right. So, uh, NVIDIA. NVIDIA. So, we saw that very big push, the channel break on Thursday. You guys know we were all over that one. On Friday, we saw it give, us, give back majority of that move off that 910 rejection. Came right back down into the 875 level, which is an interesting level that we held here on NVIDIA. So, if I zoom in, right, you can see right here. This 875 level right here. And this was a very nice hold on Thursday. And a major reason as to why I maintain my longs on NVIDIA. So you can see 875, 875. That was a very nice hold on Thursday and resulted in that strong upside. Now coming into Friday, we had that rejection up here at 910, right? A very clear rejection that we came in and, and, and moved to the downside. Um, where did we come back down into? We came right back down into the 875 level again, right? 875, 875, and look at where we closed the day on Friday. So what would I be looking for today? I'd be looking for the gap fill to 875 and then looking to see if this holds up again, right? That is sort of what my eyes are going to be looking for today. I don't like longing NVIDIA too much on this gap up, right? This is a gap up move on NVIDIA. We have gapped up off that 875 level. I would like to see NVIDIA get, fill that gap, personally. I don't trust gap fills to long because if you sort of long a gap fill and it just sort of comes back, like this is what gap fills can do, right? They'll gap and go in the short term and then they'll eventually fill the gap and you're stuck with your pants down, right, after longing that a little bit too early. So I don't want to get stuck with my pants down on NVIDIA, all right? I would rather get in down at that 875 and know that I have risk reward and know that I have a belt on, right? There's your analogy of the day. I want my belt on, on my pants. And I would feel more comfortable with my belt at 875 being long down here after a gap fill, right? Then I would be gapping, going, and then trying to long here and then seeing it reject, you know, fill the gap and then come back up, right? This is a very uh, common thing to see on gap ups, right? You'll get, hey, you know, a little bit more upside, you know, sort of sucker some people into it after the gap up, fill the gap. All these longs right here get stopped out, right? They start getting stopped out. It comes back down to the demand. It does fill the gap. And then this ends up being the long opportunity, right? So take a look at this, right? Really pay attention to what I just wrote here because this is very important and this happens a lot, guys. This happens a lot, more than you may, uh, more than you may realize, for some of you guys out there. This is possibly a lot of people's losses, right? Where you lose a lot is right here. You have a gap up on a stock. You get sort of suckered into that stock. You you see it starting to go strong in the pre-market or in the, in the market open, right? Maybe the first 10 minutes are strong. So you get sort of suckered into some longs right here, right? These are your long entries right here. You see it sort of reject again. Maybe it rejects that 20 SMA. It pulls back, right? It pulls back, and that's a good pullback, right? This pullback is what it should be doing because it should fill the gap. But you're already in too early. You get stopped out. You take a loss. You watch NVIDIA move lower, right? Move lower into that gap fill, right? And then after it fills that gap later in the day or maybe the next day, it starts to really rip again, right? After the gap fill, and you got stuck, right? Right in here, longing before the gap. So... Pay attention to that, guys. I'm, I'm being serious. Like, this is something that happens quite a bit and something you have to try to relax on and try to let happen, right? So today, the, the answer today might be, hey, let's let NVIDIA fill the gap and then let's look to long it. So I'm not saying that that's going to happen today. I don't, I can't, I wish I could. I wish I could tell the future because I would be, I wouldn't be here, okay? <laughs> if I could tell the future, you would not see me on this screen right now. Um, but 
uh, yeah, let's keep an eye on that. 890, big level to watch out for. 20 SMA above. And then gap fill is something to be watching for. All right. AMD. Man, I, I'm not going to lie when I tell you. Uh, I am very interested in trying to find a long on AMD, but man, I feel like I'm going to be early at one of these points. So uh, I'm trying to be cautious here because I don't want to get suckered into this one too soon. Uh, but there is an interesting, and I, mean, and I mean interesting, weekly chart on this one that I am trying to monitor very closely. Uh, you have an AMD previous weekly high. The exact high is like 165. What's the high of this candle? 164.46. I'm going to put that on my charts real quick. 164.46. That is a very important previous weekly high. Right there. But I'm trying to see like where else is that weekly level come in. And I think it could come down into like the high of this wick, which is that 156.73, which is right in here, right? And so this whole area is sort of interesting for a weekly chart break and retest, right, long. It's interesting. It's interesting, right, because this is a previous major weekly high, right? This is where the, where AMD previously rejected on the weekly chart. Um, and we are trading back into it, right? And we found some, for now, you know, in the short term, some support in this zone. So does this zone here from the previous weekly highs turn into a hold level that results in an upside trade something i will be watching uh, i'm not sure it's ready yet right because i haven't quite seen you know that strength on amd to make me think that it's going to do that uh but i don't want to miss it if it starts to sort of show up and so make sure to keep that on your watch guys make sure to keep that on your watch it's an interesting longer term look we know AMD has been a weak POS, right? It's been a weak POS for a long time now. So I'm not sure I'm ready to go for it. Um, but it's something to monitor. So for now, right, I will say I would not be looking to long this yet because it's clearly very weak here, right? There's been no signs of strength on AMD, and uh, it's just continued to move lower. So the level I'd be watching here overall is this 160 and this 100 SMA. We can very clearly see that's where AMD's at. Uh, if I wanted to long AMD, I'd probably wait for it to get back. The real, like the right thing to wait for to really get confirmation is for it to get back above these lows, right? Get out of this lower channel, right? Because what AMD is doing so far is a lower, a, a channel and a channel, right? So AMD for now is just making new lows or previous lows into new highs, which is bearish, right? Short-term AMD is very bearish. Uh, so I don't love that, and that's why I want to be careful thinking the way I am here. Uh, but the 100 SMA definitely is interesting, right? Does this provide some opportunity as the AMD is sort of trading at the 100 SMA, as it's trading at this 160 demand? Is there any type of volatility back to the upside off this level? Something that's in my mind. Um 165 is a very clear rejection point for now. So I'd probably want to see AMD over that 165. Uh, let me go ahead and zoom out here real quick. Got a little bit more time. 165. Yeah, I mean, that China news is why AMD has been so weak. It's definitely the reason why. Um, so right here, we have these sort of lows. What is it? like? One. Yeah, I'm going to keep it at 165 because I think that's going to be the key level. So... I would want AMD over this 165 before really getting interested. If we can get above that 165, that might be something to look for. Maybe back into the 168, maybe back into the 172, okay? So you got your gap fill, right? Yeah, you did get your gap fill here. Uh, you're back at the 100. You got 160 demand below. If you can get above 165, I think you have a trade here in the short term, in the short term, all right? So I'd keep an eye on it, but... Overall, understand that AMD has been extremely weak. Uh, TSM still, eh, it's still just chilling. It's still holding above this 143, but it is still very stuck below that 148. So that's very clear. The only thing I will say here on TSM is that it is holding a very interesting four-hour trend, right? Right here. You see this four-hour trend? It's definitely holding it. So hold, 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 and again, on Friday, hold again, 20 SMA, 
So if we can get a hold, a strong hold above 143, you might look for that pop again into 148. Something to be watching there. MU continuing to hold this channel as well. You guys can see right here, very defined channel on MU. We have that demand below around that 120. We have that clear rejection up at 126. It's about a six point range that you can continue to look to trade MU. Uh, I want to go to Meta real quick because Meta is actually sort of interesting on uh, on a strong hold here. I think Meta is trying to actually build somewhat of a flag here. Uh, you guys can see right here, sort of flag-like in my eyes, but I need to get over this key level at 523. So you guys can see right here, we have this previous, you know, sort of general high around this 507, right? You also have some of these lows coming in this week at 507, last week, right? And what else is 507? It's a daily 20 right there, right? See how that daily 20 has sort of curled back to the upside at that 507? And look at how Meta has maintained that 507 level. So for me, this is a little bit of consolidation above a previous high at 507 and above that daily 20 SMA. This to me looks like it could do one of these, right? One of these sort of dances here and sort of pop back to the upside on a trend break. That looks like something I would be monitoring here on Meta if the markets do remain strong, of course, right? That's a, that's a prerequisite to this happening is markets need to be strong. Um, before you look for that, right, what are some things to be careful of? Well, 523 is a very clear rejection point. You can see this has rejected like three days in a row, so I'd be careful of rejections again. And if this rejects again today, well, what are you looking for? Let's look for gap fill, right? 523, if this rejects again today, well, let's look for that gap fill back to 507. Could be something to watch. Coinbase, man, was this a was this a miss? Was this a, a miss for the ages? Uh, we've been talking about Coinbase 260 rejections for the last two weeks. It's been happening for the last two weeks, and it happened again on Friday with aggression. Uh, so 260, 260, 260, 260, 260. That's been a very clear rejection point. And look at this beauty on Friday, right? We got back under 260, 260, 260, reje triple top rejections on Friday. And look at that fade to end the day. So this was a gorgeous one on Friday. Congrats if you caught this, guys. But unfortunately, Coinbase is back at demand lows. So that idea is sort of gone. Um, that idea for me is, is pretty much gone. You can see for now, you're sort of getting stuck under some of those lows from Thursday, which is around this 248. Uh, but I don't think I'll be looking to short Coinbase into 240 uh, because Coinbase at 240 is just too strong in my eyes. So... If you go to one hour chart, you can see this is just a 20 point channel on coin, 240, 240, 240, 240, right? Way too strong of demand down there to be looking to short into it. So what I would need on Coinbase is a pop back into 260 and then look for the fade again. So you can look to long coin at 240, you can look to short coin at 260. That's the two levels I'd be watching. Um, let's go to Google and Microsoft, oh Google, man. <laughs> Google's been such a beast. What a beast of a stock this has been. Um, what did we do on Friday? We literally just, literally, literally, literally uh, just pulled back. You guys have seen that uh, that meme with the guy in the airplane. Um, so you can see right here, 158, 158. Look at that pullback to 158 again. 158, strong level, holding above that 156. And now look at the hold over 160. Uh, so literally. Uh, if we can pull back to that 160, that would be my long to look for today. Look for that break and retest of 160. If you can get that pullback, which I don't know if you will, but if you can, 160 would be the level to watch. What a strong Google move it has been. Uh, Microsoft, nothing much here. Channel trading, no updates there. Amazon, be careful under the all-time high. All right, I will say this demand at 185 looks very nice. Look how strong this is holding at 185. Uh, but we're not going to long into all-time highs here, right? We're not going to long right into the all-time high and then see this happen. So what would I look for on Amazon? Well, you could look for that all-time high rejection for a gap fill move into 185, or you can wait for this to really hold above. The last time it held above, though, what did it do? It failed. So I'm not a fan here. I'm not really trusting of Amazon yet. I don't really like to long something right into its all-time high. Uh, if you're going to long Amazon at any point, why don't you look to long it on a pullback, right? Why don't we get more interested in longing 
you you almost need like I know this is an extreme example. You almost need to think about the upside and downside in the current market conditions. You need to think about upside in the pre-market being bad and downside in the pre-market being good or upside in general being bad for you to actually take a trade, right? It might be good for the stock to move higher eventually, but for you to actually execute short-term trades, you do not want to see upside, right? You don't want to be like, this should not interest you in upside. What should be interesting you in upside is when you see this, right? Down into this level, right? Okay, Amazon's back down to 25. Now I'm interested, right, in that upside. This is sort of how we have to think in the current trend because the market has been in channels. And so downside is good for upside. Upside is bad for upside, right? Upside is good for downside, right? At, at least in the channels that we've been trading. And, and, and I know that's an extreme example, but in a lot of stocks like Microsoft, for example, upside's good for downside and downside is good for upside, right? Upside is good for downside, for downside trades. I know it's sort of confusing. I know that's an extreme example, but, uh, you know, and I know it's not a 100% certainty example either, but that's typically what we've been seeing. Upside moves have been good for those fades and downside fades have been great for those upside trades. And so that is what we need to continue to really be aware of, right? So a gap up on Amazon into all-time highs has zero interest. I have zero interest in longing that, right? I'm not going to long a stock like Amazon after a gap up into all-time highs uh, when, you know, I would rather be looking to see if that's a rejection point, right? So I know it's not going to always be that way, but, you know, that's sort of how it's been and something we need to be aware of, guys, all right? So that's going to be it for the live stream, guys. Uh, I hope you, I appreciate you guys staying focused, and I thought, thought it was a really good uh, live stream. Thank you guys for the uh, good good chat. Um 52.15, you guys can see right here, 52.15, 1, 2, 3, 4, 52.15, watch that 52.15, that's the ES level, and then again, guys, I think you'd walk in today and you'd be extremely, extremely cautious of this 18.370 and 18.400 level above, be careful up there, that is a very dangerous level up there on the NASDAQ, Russell holding the 100 SMA, that's pretty clear there. Uh, Dow Jones. Still below that. Still below that. Uh, yeah, it held that demand, right? Look at that demand we had. We had this on our charts. What is it? 38,260. So still below this supply. Holding above that demand. Watch that 100 SMA on Dow Jones. All right, guys. Thank you guys for everything. Appreciate you being here. Um... What else? I think that's it. Press that like button before you head out. Subscribe to the channel. Good luck out there today, guys. Make sure you watch those morning gap ups, guys. Be careful on these morning gap ups. This market is not strong enough to be chasing gap ups, in my opinion. If this was a new high on the market and the market was ripping and we're just juicing, right? Sometimes gap ups are good, right? Because you can get those gap and goes. But I do not have any, any trust in the market that we're in to trust gap ups. So look for those gap fills. Look for those pullbacks. Look for that to create opportunity. That's how I would approach today. Press that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.